Good evening, folks. This is your captain, Adam Shapiro, speaking. On behalf of our entire crew, I'd like to welcome you to TEDx York School. We realize you have a lot of options when deciding how to spend your weekend, and we appreciate the fact that you chose us tonight. We've got a lot of exciting speakers, so sit back, relax, and enjoy the talks. Before I get started, I'd like to ask all of you a question. Do any of you recognize this picture? You know what that is? How about this one? Yep. Or this one. All of those pictures were taken on one flight lesson last month. My friend Lexiel, who I believe is here in the audience, rode in the, along in the back seat of the four-seater aircraft and took all of the awesome pictures. I'm incredibly lucky to be able to spend many of my weekends like this, getting high on aviation fuel. <laughs> my addiction to flight began back in the sixth grade when my parents bought me an Android tablet. Like many other children my age, I was consumed by the plethora of video games presented to me through the glowing screen of my device. Unlike the majority, however, one of the ga games I became addicted to ended up playing a major role in my future, as well as devour my allowance money with in-app purchases. <laughs> this game was a flight simulator. I quickly learned the basic concepts of flight from this rudimentary game. And a short while later, I got my first desktop flight simulator. Still unskilled in the art of flight planning, I would navigate between airports using only the in-game map through all kinds of weather. One day, on a flight from Italy to the Austrian Alps, I decided to descend into a bank of clouds. I thought, oh well, the highest mountain's only about 4,000 feet. I should pop out somewhere under the clouds and see the runway somewhere. Fortunately for my virtual passengers, the mountain elevation was actually measured in meters, resulting in a tragic accident. I reloaded the plane and tried again. After about a year spent learning how to avoid mountains and perform basic unit conversions, my family gave me the incredible opportunity to begin taking flight lessons in real life. After a lot of time spent unlearning all of my bad flight simulator habits, <laughs> I got my glider rating and soloed a powered airplane for the first time. This winter, I plan on taking the exam to become a powered airplane pilot. Flying an aircraft on my own gives me a sense of responsibility that not many other people my age experience. In real life, you can't just press the reload button when you crash into a mountain. Even compared to driving a car, flying is a really big responsibility, as it requires a lot of pre-planning and workload management. In a car, you hop in and listen to the radio while keeping the vehicle in between the two lines. In an aircraft, before you even take off, you have to check the weather and make sure the aircraft is airworthy. Once you get in the air, you have to not only listen to but talk on the radio, maintain altitude, look for traffic, and figure out where you're supposed to be going, all while flying at 100 miles per hour. Now, this may seem like a very stressful situation to some of you. However, for me, flying actually offers an awesome opportunity to clear my head. When I'm in the air, I'm so busy that the only thing occupying my consciousness is flying the plane, and all the things that usually clutter my head are gone. Especially after a busy week of school, a weekend flight feels amazing, as the only thing I have to worry about is operating the plane while enjoying the amazing view. The world looks a lot different from a small aircraft. Now, most of you have probably flown a large commercial jet. However, seeing the world from 36,000 feet is a lot different than seeing the world from 3,000 feet. In a small aircraft, you're low enough to be able to pick out detail, while at the same time being able to see for miles and miles around you. Every time I go flying, I see the world that I live in every day, like the roads I drive on, the trails that I run on, and of course, York as I fly over on final approach. <laughs> on several occasions, I've waved to friends on the ground whom I could see clearly. I have this vivid memory of my uh, cross-country coach and, um, and physics teacher, Dr. Hanak, who's actually one of our later speakers, uh, standing on the softball field as I whizzed over at 400 feet. I remember that, Dr. Hanna. <laughs> Moments like this convinced me that I want to become a pilot. In addition to the responsibility, the, um, uh, the responsibility and just the pure joy of flying, aviation has also given me a, a sense of confidence as it provides me with the path in life that I know I will enjoy. People sometimes ask me if I want to go into a career in aircraft design or aviation business instead of flying. And my answer is always maybe, but only if I like it. To be totally honest with you, I have no idea exactly where I'm going to be 10 or 20 years from now, but I do know that becoming a pilot is the first step. Thank you.